Second one. Yes. yes. Okay. So we know that the vocal system is into the body and into specific segments of the body. It uses muscles and structures having multiple functions. Probably some of you know on those better than me. Today we focus on the respiratory and vocal and postural functions with a joint-to-joint -joint approach. And the question are how they correlate in precise terms. In here I would open a path, I hope, to a more sophisticated thoughts and directions of researching and getting specific in what, how, why, when of those correlations. I know it's quite ambitious. And if as an effect on the vocal system or a direct contribution, so to be the vocal system thought in a less narrow way. I know it is more precise the more restricted the system is, and I don't mean that the vocal system is narrow, but I would like to, to get precise with some other contributions. I can think that as a, the posture is a big box with a smaller box inside, being the smaller the vocal one, the smaller is into the bigger, they are independent in some ways, share some parts and even something more tricky as the cervical segment, you see, for Grey Cook they want it stable. We have a larynx. He doesn't think that we have a larynx. And I think we can say that the larynx wants to be mobile, and yet, just yet we see something of a correlation. So, I anticipated that I look at posture and overall all the body as the environment in which the vocal system can operate and develop. We know it happens also the other way around, but I remain focused on this direction now. First, does voice production react to joint dysfunction far from the vocal tract? Look at this model. It has represented a great point of development since 20 years now in assessment, rehabilitation, athlete, non-athlete training, injury prevention and fitness. And it has grown much beyond this model that is not completely satisfying indeed, yet it is a reference into all the previous. You see these are alternate functions. It means that they are functional if the function of the model is respected. And we don't have this idea, usually, or not in a vocal field. I don't think that everybody of you thinks of the hips as mobile and the lumbar tract as stable. I mean, I know, I know. And we don't think of the thor thoracic segment as mobile. What it means that? It means that, for example, first, the first thing, if the joints are stiff, as it happens very often now, they will find and they will try to start to get the movement in the upper and the lower joint, meaning that they will mobilize the joint, the, the knees and the lumbar segments. If the lumbar segment is mobilized, all our abdominals will try to do what? To compensate and to stabilize, and so on. So yet, does this functions? Yeah. In which ratio? It depends on how far they are and how Important is the deformation, because we will have also a lot going on later on, what forces are going to move. And this would be the sense for us, okay? Even more direct than this one. Point two. I will give you the, yeah. Let's see it. <coughs> the positions and range of motion <coughs> count in how and especially what muscles perform, meaning what function they perform. The, the, the important study on hips joint in the page on science, you'll have the reference, did found that muscles change the ratio of their functioning according to the position of the joint, and especially that muscles can revert their function, and this is very important. You know we have biology that works by redundancy, so if a function is unavailable, another part will provide it, according to the position of the joint, so it's geometric. So we can control functions by the position, and positions count and also count a lot. This means that we can align how we want, but if we do not have enough of the range of motion for a function, we will not have more of that function. In some cases, even the reverse of the function, some of the chronic not solvable voices or knees, meaning we will always be limited in all the segments by this limitation being a weakness in the entire chain. Or we have to specifically train it or gain range of motion. Point three. So here we have some references. I don't follow those, it's, it's for you if you want. Use of muscles and their functions affect the antagonist since they work when functional and when asking or work to do so, not in relaxation, as an opposing system, meaning it is a concentric eccentric activity modulated by the load and the position of the joint. Concentric 
is the shortening of the muscle during contraction, <coughs> while there is another kind of work that is the eccentric, that is the elongation of the contracting muscles, not relaxing muscle, contracting muscles, and the tendon, and all the structure, also the joint, and is related to joint position, and they oppose, meaning they do that. When we do a staccato, diminuendo and crescendo, we are going to shorten and elongate the same. It's called a pleometric activity. What I will call of that in the workshop. I have two workshops, one tomorrow and the other one. That is just to give an idea of the, of the reference, the reference and the weight of the thing. So, you know, on con concentric at the is, is simply the Newton's law that at every action corresponds a reaction equal and contrary. We have to see which one is the reaction, is if it was the one we want, or it is a passive reaction, because the eccentric load, not being eccentric anymore, is called trauma. So there is the, trick, the tricky thing, that we work on relaxation very often because we don't want to cause trauma, but the trauma is a portion of the, the, the thing. The thing can be very interesting. And it's interesting because, and you have there some more, and I found, found that in the last 15 years, quite amazing, that, uh, where was it? Yeah, in the eccentric, the muscles are usually stronger, not the gluteus maximum. And this is very important for us also to see this. And it's also where some medium, long-term, local and systemic adaptation, lo systemic meaning also in the brain and in the metabolism of all the body. They use the eccentric also for that for hyperansulinemia and other things happen. If the eccentric capacity of the muscle tendon is exceeded by the load or frequency of the loads, it is what we call trauma. So the importance of periodization, progression of the load, and position, and to avoid the end of range of motion, too close to the exceeding. For, for us, it's the exceeding of the extremities of the voice. We have not capacity of flexibility anymore. And as one of the joint by joint uh, great trainers, that is Eric Cressy, says that functional is not just to have the mobility to get into this ad function, uh, desired positions, but it's also the capacity to get away from not desired positions. And this is very important because there we have some artistic relevant things and they don't get damaged if they have the mobility to get there and come back to functionality immediately. So we control the load. But we never get to the extremes, meaning we have a small box of capacity. What we do? We do strategies to have a bigger box, but we remain in the safe zone always into a safe place, but we can get to a safer zone. So, these things mean that we can modify with different strategies, even very stiff or shortened muscles, because we can work them in the eccentric or concentric capacity, and we can work them by the positions in the opposite of the movement, and the opposite of the movement is going to solve a block. And we have a lot of stiffnesses somewhere, so we can work on them not just by trying to relax, but also by creating conditions to have them getting more concentric using the eccentric capacity of the other and the load, and also loading other joints to perform more functional function that will relate to the above or below joint. And it's quite interesting. Other thing is the consequence of thinking the breath of the singing, for example, as expiratory, inspiratory, as an eccentric, concentric, well-regulated action, you know, in the... Uh, Michael Trimble uh, volume, uh, he explains the Belcanto breath, uh, the one of Lily Lemon and others, or Lamperti Lut Vocal, as uh, the opposing of exhalatory with the concentric of diaphragm. Yeah, we use that, but we use that in the body, not in the vocal system. We have effects in the vocal system, but it's something that they're using for the trainers, because the body is one. Is that another way of... In, it's just another way of looking at the same thing. It's a, it's and it's another way to work. It's what work. we call in, uh, inhalare. Sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, but we can do that in many ways. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Contemporary, uh, um, contemporary music uh, singers, they do exactly the opposite. So we find uh, in many different techniques and styles uh, the opposite, and it looks like it's not possible. No, it's just a way. The one use the concentric more, the, or the other use the eccentric. But it's exactly the same thing. This is the underlying principles. I'm trying to say, what does big box in common and in relation to small box? 
for us directly in what has been found traditional because the body is the same and when they were good practices they were the same and what we can say in scientific terms and how we can work to have this yeah oh really yeah. okay so what I wanted to say how to move the body into all of this with two forces basically one is the push anti-gravity and the other is the braking system that is going to make all the movements possible. My hypothesis is that the anti-gravity, it shows itself in the vocal system as air exhaling, okay? But it's exactly the same force. And inhaling is the braking system. And when we have a reverse of the function, we will have the function corresponding to the force. And this is a problem. So, I go fast. How it does apply to singing? And here we can listen to. I apply that since more than 10 years now. This is a, another singer, no career. She's this one. After 12 years of voice lessons, she's the best. After seven weeks, this is after seven weeks. After one year, she was a singer. Now she teaches it in the conservatory. Why don't you do? Like this. This is after one year. She has won an international competition. She, she's a singer. She there are all these functions in the hips. So yes, it counts. Simply. It seems. Thank you so much. Uh